to our spotlights. First, I start this one on here. Happy for anyone else to also jump in, but I just think we should all take a second, unmute, and just do a big round of applause for everyone who was involved in the FBM mainnet launch. Um, this technically happened after our last end result ham, so please unmute and let's all celebrate this awesome milestone. Yeah. Ooh, good job. Thank you all so much. Um, this is big and uh, super, super exciting to see all of the people who are now building on top of it. Um, lots of uh, shiny logos that are now participating um, and uh, lots of Falcoin that's getting deployed, lots of accounts that are getting created, um, lots of new applications that are now possible. So it's big. Um, thank you all for being a part of it. Over to Patrick for the randomness. Uh, yes, we ran the second edition of our randomness summit uh, in Tokyo, the first being online only in 2020. Our goal was to interact with people building in the same space as us and get to know some other people working on cool random things. Uh, we had 45 attendees from a variety of institutions, notably lots of different Ministry of Defenses. Uh, but I confirm they weren't able to bribe us to uh, break the round, so it's fine. Uh, some of the cool follow-ups uh, that might be interesting are NIST are actually standardizing randomness beacons and threshold cryptography. Uh, so we're hoping to make DRAND, other than the reference implementation, uh, the first compliant implementation uh, with the NIST standard, which would be very cool. Uh, we're planning to host another randomness summit sometime in the future, this time potentially alongside another slightly more hackery event so we can encourage more people to actually build on top of DRAND. Uh, all the talks can be found uh, on YouTube. And if you're short on time, which uh, everyone seems to be, uh, Bernardo David from the University of Copenhagen gave a wonderful talk summarizing everything you can imagine about randomness, verifiable secret sharing, VRS, VDFs, quantum randomness, randomness from speed of light via satellites. Uh, it's all there. So check it out. There's a blog post coming soon. And also, I forgot uh, in the DRAND update to say the most important thing, we've got a new project lead, Eric, who's uh, I've seen us on the call. So Welcome, Eric. He's going to do lots of biz dev things. Uh, we've already taken DRAN to space, so hopefully Eric will be able to take DRAN uh, to the moon and beyond. Thank you very much. Epic. Over to our uh, IPDX update. Hi. I'm excited to introduce IPDX's innovative solution to GitHub Actions Monitoring. As you know, GitHub currently lacks a comprehensive CI monitoring product, which prompted us to create our own. Our solution is quite elegant. We monitor web events, store the raw data in a PostgreSQL database, and use Grafana to generate insightful visualizations. Let's dive into a real-life example. Our main dashboard provides in-depth insights into GitHub Action workflows and jobs. By default, it displays organization-level information and groups results by repository. Users can easily select specific time series or even reconfigure the entire dashboard to focus on a specific repository. With the flexibility to choose time ranges, granularity, and grouping precision, our tool empowers users to gain unprecedented insights. Thanks to our monitoring solution, we can see that a week ago, LIDAR brilliantly optimized the Docker Publish workflow in Kuba, reducing its runtime by an impressive 90% by eliminating unnecessary QM virtualization. Our GitHub Actions monitoring solution offers comprehensive insights and customization options. It gives our 2% stream true superpowers. If you're interested in checking it out, let us know. Awesome. Nice update. Um, Tisudo. Hello. Hi. This is Matteo from CryptoNet. And what I'm going to bring on the spotlight in my less than a minute is the fact that Tisudo, our new SNAR scheme, went to open source. There's a repo out there and there is a blog post, which I invite you to check out. It's tiny in the bottom left over here, but I also share in chat. And our design is there and you can find lots of more details than what I'm going to tell you about. If you don't know what this tool is, in one sentence, is a very fast, uh, it's a snark with a very fast prover, very short proofs, and lots of nice features. But the main nice feature, like you mentioned, is it's universal and short. And what does it mean for Falcon? Uh, that means that you got easy and fast upgradability whenever you need it. You can do one single universal and easy setup. And it can give you fast proofs. While 
proving acceleration techniques are getting better and better. At some point, some design is going to matter. We're going to hit the wall with that. The studio will be ready to plug in when we need that. There's lots of other things I could I'd like to brag about, but I'd like to say, so what's happening next? This was the crowning of eight months of work. Uh, CryptoNet is not actively working on this, but we are looking for collaborators, external collaborators to improve on our implementations. And there's a paper coming up very soon. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, Alfonso, IPC. Thank you. So this is going to be really quick. I just want to call everyone to test the subnet. Like there's uh, in our repo in the APC agent, you already have some like getting started guide on how to run locally or on SpaceNet your own subnet. It's true that there's no until the 20th. We won't release the, um, the CrossNet message support. So in the end, you will be able to run different subnets but not communicate between them. But it would be great if we can start getting some folks to test it and to like please break it <laughs> we want to see like what is wrong before we we release it to the public so there's there are some ducks there's a getting started guide in the ipc agent uh, consensus shipyard slash ipc agent repo but in any case like probably we can share the links here and like drop us a message in in the ipc dev uh, channel in slack and we can get you through the first steps the ux is a bit rough so any feedback is more than welcome like we want to improve that the first thing that we want to prove is UX. Like the tech is there, but the UX is a bit rough. Thank you. Over to Guy. Hi. Yeah, so it turns out Guy is sick, so, so I'm going to have to do it for, for him. Current situation, uh, Falcon is actually vulnerable to a 20% attack. And you intuitively wouldn't expect it to be so because you only have one winning ticket out of five in expectation. But as it turns out, there are circumstances in which you can, if you can send different blocks. So with a single winning ticket, you can generate different blocks. If you send, if you send, if you generate and send a different block to each of uh, to each validator, then you can actually confuse people into preventing convergence uh, and and not building a chain while you keep building your private chain in parallel. So so that is the issue that we're addressing. The solution is consistent broadcast, which just which just means that you cannot send equivocated blocks, uh, broadcast uh, or send equivocated blocks to to the network, and so that raises the the attack bar to above forty percent, and it brings you to to the actual expected uh, situation uh, above. So uh, what does this cost us? And the good news is that it does not cost us uh, pretty much anything. The only thing that we need to do is to, to keep a cache of, of uh, the blocks we receive and a buffer and, and wait two to three extra seconds before actually considering a block valid to start building on it. Uh, that also means that no hard fork is required. This is actually a, a entirely client-based change that, that people can make. And that brings me to, well, next week to the actual announcement, which is the fact that this is already merged into Walter's Master and is on its way to production. There is a swipe bug that, that we still need to, to figure out, but, but it's done. And so Falcon is safer. Thank you. Awesome. Over to Ian for ProBlab. Hi, it's Ian at ProBlab. Uh, I'm gonna keep this quick. So I wanna uh, see uh, Hannah, can you hear me okay? Um, ProBlab's mission is to measure the performance of Web3 protocols and evaluate them and propose improvements uh, in their design. Uh, and to that end, we run a lot of systems that collect data continuously. We monitor things like, uh, we call the IPFS network and, and the Falcoin uh, DHTs. We monitor website uh, performance. We analyze uh, DHT access patterns and the, and the performance. We have quite a lot of data. We kind of want to surface it in a better way, but we also want to surface it in a way that gives context to that data. So uh, what we have put together is some just started, it's really, literally only about two or three weeks old, is ProBlab.io. Uh, it's a place for us to publish uh, the data we're working on and, and collecting, give some context around that in terms of like the methodology used to collect it, what it means, how to interpret it, what the limitations are in terms of how that, that should be viewed. Uh, we're putting in data from other systems, uh, some of the stuff we've got in Grafana uh, and uh, Prometheus from other systems. Um, we want your data. Uh, if you've got data that you think uh, should be analyzed in, in alongside the stuff we're doing with uh, ProLab, then come talk to us. Um, and what we've got the idea is to bring this all together into kind of a hub. And around that, wall, we're going to we're going to have uh, all the different things we've got. We're already doing things like weekly reports, and we've got the KPIs, and the stats IPFS network, which is an overall overarching kind of place, you know, single point of access for getting to see this data. 
so come along, have a look. I'm trying to keep it uh, uh, simple, but it's going to expand over time. It's under kind of a lot of work, uh, work in progress kind of stuff. So thanks, everyone. <music>